a choice and your destiny is up to you. And I am living the life that I choose because it is my decision. When I was four years old, I heard the words, I never wanted children anyway. And those big words caused big feelings in that little girl. And from that moment on, I was wounded, scared, insecure, making my decisions based on my emotions. The manifestation of my experience caused me to become a pleaser, someone with low self-esteem. But on the outside, I appeared strong, resilient, a woman with a purpose. I was an excellent student, kept the house clean, played the role of big sister to my little brother, who's only 11 months younger than me. <laughs> and I had my first job before the age of 15. Imagine this little girl doing everything that she could to unwind the words that were imprinted in her mind, all with the goal of being wanted because she was truly afraid of abandonment. Becoming a driven adult, I quickly climbed the corporate ladder, gaining notoriety and success. I was married by the age of 23, had my first son by the age of 25, and according to others, I was living the dream. My life appeared to be picture perfect. But here's the problem with a picture. It looks perfect, but it isn't real. I was constantly saying yes to the boss in the assignment, yes to the needs of others, and yes to the then husband. <laughs> you know, my goal was to meet the expectation of others. Then one day, it dawned on me, what am I doing? The girl that I was, was living according to how I felt. But I didn't want to be that girl. You see, I had become an overachiever. <laughs> living my life and making my decisions according to my feelings. Yet, I wasn't getting the return that I desired in my life experiences. And I wanted to experience my life on a deeper level. So in order to do that, I had to deal with the fact that while I am strong, I have got to deal with those internal weaknesses. You know, I can remember working into the wee hours of the night, accepting projects, going above and beyond for my boss. And then when it came down to the review and increases, I didn't get the money that I thought I deserved. I mean, I had done everything that I thought I was supposed to do. And yet I was overlooked. The organization was growing and so was the executive compensation. And as one of the executives, I expected to get my share as well. But it didn't happen for me at least not right away. You know, as a divorced woman by that time, having three sons, I was petrified about being able to provide. So I figured I would just do more, give more, in order to gain what I didn't even realize I already deserved. I was going above and beyond, overdoing, overcommitting, in fact, I was volunteering for things that nobody even asked me to do. You know how that is. <laughs> and then it dawned on me one day, I don't even want to be in this relationship anymore. But after I thought about it, it really wasn't his fault. After all, I was the one who showed up scared and insecure, giving more than anyone had asked me to give, and then had the audacity to be mad when I didn't get what I wanted. Something had to give. You know, I realized that because I was living according to my emotions and I was scared, I was constantly overdoing. I was continually uncomfortable. In fact, there were times when I could create a situation in my mind, play it out to the end, and then be freaking out about the result literally having anxiety, and nothing had actually even happened. <laughs> I realized in that moment that 
I have got to figure out how to deal with being comfortable, yet being uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, I remember a time when I was sitting in a board meeting, because I work in an all-male environment, and I was the only female in the room. And I was watching one of the men who has admired talk with passion and vigor, strong as they described it. Quite frankly, the man was yelling and screaming, and he was truly having a tantrum. <laughs> and then I thought about the times when I had used that same style of communication, and I was told that I was too sensitive, doing too much. And then I remember other times when I had overheard conversations about a woman who was expressing so much emotion. In fact, she had the nerve to allow a tear to drop. And then the conversation was about how she couldn't be fit for the job. She was just way too emotional. Something had to change. Now remember, I'm living my life according to my emotions. But when I heard that, I decided I have got to shift. Crying by my lonesome when my, fingers, my feelings were hurt. And hollering and screaming when I wanted my way. That couldn't take place anymore. I decided that I needed to shift. Now my transformation was gradual, but I was on my way to change. This time I decided to go and have a conversation with my boss about that money that he owed me. <laughs> now, I was scared to death, literally petrified. You know I had already worked it up in my mind that I was gonna lose my job, right? <laughs> But I already had a backup plan because I had another opportunity in my back pocket, but I really didn't want to take it. I walked in there to have the conversation, and I shared with him that I had gone above and beyond. My reviews had been stellar, and that I wanted to be paid for the money that I felt that I had earned. I was petrified. But it was in that moment of truth and clarity that I got my money. What happened for me more importantly though, was that I realized that although I was afraid, fear could have a voice, but it could no longer have a vote. You know, there was another time in my life where I was dealing with a situation with a girlfriend that I have known most of my life. And by default, because of the years that we've known each other, you naturally call each other best friend. But the reality of it is, I really didn't know that much about her. Now remember, as a pleaser, you don't really want to take a loss. So having those difficult conversations are tough. But I decided that I didn't want to have a relationship and label it as something that it wasn't. So I decided to have a conversation with her. And because of her love for me, I can truly now call her my best friend. You know, as a woman who is not married, when I'm not in a relationship, I have the privilege of dating. And oftentimes, as women, overachievers and pleasers, we think about the things that we want. But what we don't think about are the things that we don't want. Well, now that I'm understanding that I have to have these boundaries, and that I need to be open, honest, authentic, and truthful, when I decide that I want to date a man, while I typically look at, is he cute? Does he have a nice career? You know, is he a great father? Are we gonna have some fun? What's more important to me is, is he gonna bring me some flowers every now and then, open up my car door, pump the gas? <laughs> because the reality of it is, my relationships don't break down because of all of the things I want. They break down because of the things that I don't want. So now, being a woman who is no longer living based on my emotions, I am able to talk about what is important to me. I am able to share not only what I want, but more importantly, what I don't want. This means that I have to understand the power of no. I have to be able to deal with the fact that although I may have some difficult conversations, which ultimately could cause me to take a loss. 
The most important thing is that when I deal with the things that I want, I'm going to end up with the things that I gain. You know, recently I walked into my boss's office to have a conversation with him. And because now I'm all big and bad and bold, <laughs> I said, um, you know, I need to have a conversation with you. And unlike before, he said, uh, you know, I don't really have time to talk. Not really even looking up to me. And I said, well, you know, that's awesome because actually all you need to do is sit there and listen. I'll do all the talking. <laughs> you know, it was in that moment of truth that not only did he hear me, but he saw me. And our relationship has shifted. And it is now so much better. Understanding the things about myself has caused me to have much healthier relationships. I now am able to set boundaries in my life and ask for the things that I want with clarity. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm not afraid. And what I also realize is that I'll probably always be a pleaser. But back before, in the beginning of my story, the things that I did were out without consideration of myself. Now, when I make a decision, it's with consideration of myself. Remember that little girl who was sitting on the floor hearing those words, I never wanted kids anyway? She's had an opportunity to have an amazing conversation with her mom. Someone who is absolutely proud of me, who adores me, and is truly one of my best friends. I am able to use the things that I have been through now to work with others to deal with the hurt and the pain that they've been through. I now can use the hurt and the pain that I've been through to help pivot other lives forward. I am now able to understand the importance of setting boundaries and deal with the fears in my life. I live a life where I am constantly comfortable being uncomfortable. And it is okay to be afraid and allow fear to have a voice. It's whispering in my ear right now. <laughs> but it doesn't have a vote in the outcome of my decisions. Because today, I can truly say that my life is my choice. And I'm living the life that I choose because my destiny is up to me, and it is my decision.